this don't have anything to do with the lesson, but I was flipping through, trying to study a little bit, and found this verse, and it's really been on my heart this week. But it's Psalms 136, verses 1 and 2. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Amen. I've just been thinking this week, you know, what a great God we serve. Amen. And I thank God for you. And we're blessed beyond measure, whether we realize it or not. I'm just thankful He gives me a place to stay and a place to come worship Him with people I love and that love me and take care of me. I'm just, I've got a lot to be thankful for. That's right. But my thought tonight is on prayer. Yeah. And um, it ain't going to be much. I said it on a thought about lunch today, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I need your prayers. <laughs> It's helped me a lot, and I hope maybe you can get some help out of it, too. But, um, I was just thinking a little on prayer. You know, it's such a simple thing, really. I mean, it's it's really just a conversation between you and God. Right. It's, it's nothing hard. It's not complicated. Anybody can do it. But it's so simple, but it's so much, it holds so much power. Right. It holds so much in it that God can do from it. And, you know... People a lot of times say, you know, it's the least I can do to pray for them. No, it's the most. Right. 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 Me, myself, I use it as a last resort so much. You know, we do everything we can to try to fix it or something. It's like, well, I guess I should pray about it. Right. Really, that should be the first instinct. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But um, it's such a privilege to have. And um, Hebrews 4 and 16 is where I'll start out. And I'll be doing a lot of reading tonight. I'm going to have to turn it in, but I'll be scattering a little bit everywhere. But Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of God. And you know, we have this privilege. And it's such a privilege for us that the Almighty God of the gods and the ruler of the world wants to hear what I have to say. He wants to hear my needs and my problems. But not only is it just a privilege, it's desire. He asks us. He says, come, into, come boldly into the throne of grace. He wants us to come to Him. He wants to know our problems and our thoughts and our feelings. He already knows them, but He still wants to hear it from us. You know, it means a lot more to Him if we'll tell Him. And not only is it a privilege, but it's needful. Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and 17 says, one of the best known verses in the Bible just says, pray without ceasing. Right. And, um, how simple does that get? Just pray all the time. Don't matter what it is. Don't matter what you need. Don't matter where you're at. Just pray. Right. That's all we have to do, and He'll be there. And kind of going along with it being desired of them, it's a commandment. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2. Colossians 4 and 2 says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. So you know, about like pray without ceasing, just continually be praying. Don't ever quit. I know of a lot of people that's prayed for something for years and years and years. But you know what? In God's time, He'll answer that prayer if that's His will for your life. And if He don't, that's His will too. I've had a lot of things in my life that I've prayed hard for and didn't work out. But you know what? It's a lot better off to be in God's will. He knows exactly what you need and He'll give you what you need if you'll just seek His will. Also looking at Matthew 7, chapter 7, verse 7. <coughs> and it says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. You know, the Bible says talking about salvation, but it applies to the whole Bible. It's simple. A child can understand it. Right. If a child can't understand that, nobody.
I can. You know, yeah. Just ask me. That's all it takes. And I fail so much at that. I try to do it myself. And you would think it'd be a whole lot easier to ask for help. But I guess we're stubborn like that and try to do it on our own. But right. usually don't work out too often, good. But I'm thankful that he loves us enough that he'll watch us struggle and watch us fail and he's still there to have her back. Oh, yeah. you know, that's when we finally give up and call on him. Um, turn into Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. Not to say I'll be scattered all over the place. But Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I'm so thankful the Spirit knows what we need even when we don't. Amen. I don't know Amen. what I've done. There's been a lot of times in my life I didn't know how to pray or what to pray for or where to turn, but God does. Yeah. Even when you can't pray, He knows what you need. And he's always there for you. So going along with that is Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. And it says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So here's the Lord talking to the disciples and he's telling them, you know, don't be afraid, don't run away, just pray. Right. And I'll give you what exactly what you need when you need it. There's no point in us being scared and fearful of things and, you know, oftentimes I try to run away from problems when really if we just stand up and pray and face them, God's with us always. You know, we really have nothing to worry about. And I'm so thankful he's always been there for me in my life. He's never once let me down yet, and I know he never will. Amen. <clears throat> but I had just kind of a couple points on it. The first one being prayer shows God's power. And if you want to look in 1 Kings chapter 18... You know, Elijah all was quick on God. You know, he sat down under his tree and asked God to die, but God was still there with him, and he still sent an angel to him, right. just like us in our life. It don't matter if we try to quit, God won't let us. Right. He's always there to bring you back and pick you up and help you along the way. But Kings chapter 18, verses 36 through 39 says, And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known to this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned thy heart, that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is the God. He is the God, the Lord, He is the God. You know, what amazing power that Elijah found just from prayer. You know, he didn't. These servants from Baal was cutting themselves and yelling and screaming and all carrying on and nothing. But Elijah just said a simple prayer and God sent fire down from heaven and licked up the water. Right. And how amazing is that? What power He gives us every single day that we walk around and can pray anytime, anywhere. We don't have to build an altar. We don't have to have a sacrifice. We can just talk to Him. And He knows exactly what we want and need and He'll help us right then, right there if it be His will. 
The next point I had was prayer helps to bring healing. And just a few pages over in 1 Kings 17. Chapter 17, verses 17 through 22. And it says, And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou coming to me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come unto him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came unto him again, and he revived. I'm sure glad the Lord hears my voice. Amen. And, you know, here he heard Elijah exactly what he needed. And, and, you know, between these two accounts, what a witness and what a prophet Elijah was just from the power of prayer. You know, he did all these things that touched this many people just from praying, you know. And Elijah was just a normal person like we. We could do the exact same thing if we just have faith in him and pray like we would do. Sure. <clears throat> Um, the next point kind of going along with this is prayer gives strength. If we look in Judges chapter 16. Judges chapter 16, verses 28 through 30. It says, And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee. Only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines from my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, and on which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand, and of the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all of his might, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. You know, here's a perfect example of God's forgiveness too. Samson had sinned and, you know, he told the Philistines his weakness has his eyes plucked out and, you know, he was a laughing stock after all he'd done for God and now he's here. But God had mercy on him, and he prayed to God, and God still heard him. Even though he was far, far away from God, he still heard him. And he still had mercy on him, and he still forgave him, and he still allowed him to do God's work. Even though he wasn't where he should have been, he allowed him to be a witness one more time and show what God's power can do. And that's such a blessing to me because, you know, no matter how far you get away in life, not saying you can come back to God and be exactly where you're supposed to be instantly, but one prayer is all it takes. Right. You know, one prayer asking for forgiveness and realizing where you're at and what you've done. And God will forgive you and He has the power and the mercy on you to take you back and get you where you need to be. Lord. Um, next point, speaking of that, is prayer shows God's forgiveness. If you want to turn to Second Chronicles chapter 7. Chapter 7, verses 14. And it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. And 
I don't know, but that's sure what our nation needs tonight. Yeah. Not you know. yeah. And God promises it to us. You know, he says, just turn from your wicked ways and pray, and I will forgive you and heal your land. You right. know, how simple is that? Right. But how hard it is at the same time? Because it makes us swallow that pride. And it makes us turn back and say, hey, I was wrong. Hey, I shouldn't have went there. I shouldn't have done that. And God, you was right, and I need you. You know, it shouldn't be hard at all. He's the one to save your soul. and He's gave us everything we've ever had. But I know for me, it's still pretty hard sometimes to admit you're wrong, even to God, even though He knows that. But He's merciful enough to forgive us and to take us back time and time and time again, no matter what. And I'm so thankful for that. Not only does prayer show forgiveness, but it also it takes faith to pray, and it also builds faith when prayers are answered. Yeah. If we look in Daniel chapter 6. chapter 6, verse 7. And the Bible says, All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal salute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which alter it not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed, and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. You know what faith that takes to know that you're going to be thrown in the lines for doing what you're doing. You know, you know it's, it's a law, it's a decree, there's no questions asked, doesn't matter. And to still go home as soon as he finds out, and what does he do? He starts to pray. You know, we'd be so much better off. I'm so bad if, you know, conflict like that comes up. I run away and I'm like, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? You know, we'd be so much better off to do like Daniel did. No matter the circumstances, no matter what it is, where you're at, just pray. Mm -hmm. God knows the answer and it will save you a lot of heartache. Mm -hmm. And then if we look on down in, chapter, in verse 16 of the same chapter, it says, Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And I'll stop right there for a second. You know, that says a lot about Daniel's testimony that this king that is not saved and doesn't, you know, is not with God, he still recognizes that the God Daniel served has power. Right. He sees Daniel's faith and he realizes how much this means to him. And you know, Daniel didn't do, Daniel did this in the private of his home. You know, he didn't. He wasn't out preaching in the streets. He wasn't praying in the middle of the courtyard. He was praying in his own house. And the king still see that Daniel cared that much and that the Lord was that big to him. That he recognized that he'd take care of it. And then going on, verse 17, and it says, And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet. And with the signet of his lords that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went, went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste into the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said unto Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths that they, that they have not hurt me, forasmuch as before him innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, I have done no hurt. 
Then was the king exceeding glad for him, and they commanded that they, that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no matter of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. Amen. And what faith that created for Daniel. You know, he already had a lot of faith just to pray, even after the decree, and to know he was going to the lion's den. But then God brought him through, and he proved him. He said, hey, I've got your back. I told you I would, and I did. So not only did that build faith for Daniel, but that this king seen this, you know, and right. how what a witness that was to this king here, you know, to see the power of God firsthand. And if Daniel hadn't had the faith that he had had in this, the king may have never known God. Right. He would have never seen this because he had been like every other God that has no power. You know, he would have never seen the power of God. But Daniel stayed true and continued in prayer and stayed faithful and led this king to the Lord. And the next point is Jesus prayed for us in John chapter 17. John chapter 17, verses 20 through 24. And it says, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their words, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, and that they, all, they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that, thou, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. You know, what a blessing that Jesus was praying for us before we were ever existed. Yeah. Yeah. 2,000 years before he ever existed. But he knew, and he prayed for me. For everything I was going to go through, he prayed for me. And he prayed for you. And he prayed for everyone that's ever walked the earth. Right. You know, what love, what a love that God will serve. That he prays for us. You know, he has the whole world in his hands. And he's 100% man, but 100% God. And he still prays to God for us that he cares that much. Right. And you know, Jesus prayed for us, so should we not so much more pray for others? Because Jesus leads by example. So we need to follow his example in praying for others that they might get help and that they may be saved. And that God will heal them and help them and lead them and guide them. And that he'll just show them what they need. And the last and the most important one I have is prayer brings salvation. Amen. In Romans chapter 10. And this here is the most important prayer you could ever pray in your life. <clears throat> chapter, chapter 10, verse 9, the Bible says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. And there again, going back to for little children, you know, that's as simple as it gets. It doesn't yeah. matter what it is. It's just... Believe on Him, repent from your sins, and call on His name, and you will be saved. Amen. What a gracious God we serve. Amen. That's right. You know, we could make it a big, long, hard process, like some of these religions, and you know, have to go through all these different steps and things and get it all right. But yeah. He makes it so simple. You know, just call on Me, and Lord knows yeah. I probably couldn't do it if it was much harder. But I'm so thankful, <laughs> most of all, that He died for me. And that he allowed me to have this gift. And, you know, you can too if you're lost. And 
it's the best thing you'll ever do in your life. Yeah. And, uh, I'm thankful to be here tonight and be able to be up here. I know I didn't do it justice at all, but that's what I have tonight. If you've got anything to read or testimony.